Hello, type thing. Hello, Curry. Just see your comment. Uh, how are we doing with sound? You guys hear me okay? Oh, I need to move my mic. That would be helpful. Did not even have it moved over yet. There we go. That's a little better, I think. Okay, going to switch this screen over. Should be good. Oh, ish. Looks like it got moved a tiny bit, but we should be good. I need to do a quick, like, position test. Move in and out. Yeah, looks like looks like it should be okay for today. Um, hello everybody. Hello, those of you tuning in. Those of you who will catch my VOD later. Um, yeah, I turned up the, uh, I guess, gamma? <laughs> Sorry, I had to think about it. I was gonna just say settings. Um, so I adjusted my camera settings a little bit today just because I noticed in my preview that it was looking kind of darker. Um, and since we moved back over here, need to figure out some stuff, but that's good. It looked good, it looks great. Um, hoping that it stays that way because sometimes as I move my hand, you know, the color kind of changes automatically. But uh, we're just gonna kind of jump right back into this after um, I give you a quick rundown of kind of what happened over the weekend. <laughs> um, I did not have a lot of time to work on this figure over the weekend, mostly because they're super busy because of Memorial Day weekend and everything. Um, but I did manage to wrap up the eyelashes on this figure. So I, you know, finished making sure everything was okay. Um, I went ahead and I top coated the piece, so I glossed it. You can see it's, you know, nice and shiny now. Um, it was shiny before, but it has another level of a, uh, another layer of uh, gloss top coat on it now. And I went ahead and I mixed some yellow. So I just, uh, this is enamel paint here. I kind of mixed it quick because I was doing a bunch of eye kind of mock-ups, uh, illustrations on my phone, which I'll show in a second. And in pretty much all of them, they featured yellow. So at some point, you know, she's gonna have yellow in her eyes. A lot of times I work from light to dark colors. So I start with the lightest color as the base color, um, and then add, you know, accents and different things on top of that uh, lighter layer. And that's a lot easier when I'm working with enamels to go from light to dark than it is to go from dark to light. Um, just because you're going to need more coats to cover it. The color may look slightly different if you're not um, working on like a, a light colored base, etc. So I went ahead and I just filled in, um, you know, the, these pieces with that yellow, but I'm currently working on it. So we'll be doing this for a portion of today. You can see the eye on the left here, if I can get it to focus. And also I'm shifting around my seat, so. Um, this eye I've been working on, so you can see the colors um, are a little bit cleaner and the lines starting to get more defined here compared to this one, which still has paint uh, kind of all over the place, and so I need to clear that up. Um, I also did the same thing for this one. I had to do the layers a little bit thicker, so we'll see how that ends up. Um, because she does have this kind of uh, concave eye, I think concave is the right term, um, the paint kind of like settled in the bottom, it tends to do that instead of like versus a flat plane here. So um, I'll be sure to take a look at this and see kind of, you know, what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Thank you, Hollow Eye. Yeah, we're, we're getting there eventually. Um, I find that it looks a little bit uh, weird. The eye typically does until you get up until the very end. And so, um, you kind of have to have a vision in your head of what, you know, you imagine it to look like. Let's see, so excited I could catch a stream. Hey, nice to see you here, downpour. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, Memorial Day. <laughs> Hopefully people have some time off. I hear it's also a bank holiday, or like the tail end of that, I guess, at this point. Um, pretty late over in the Europe area, so if you're from there, thank you for tuning in as well. Um, before I start again, I keep saying that. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys some uh, quick mock-ups that I did on my phone. Um, in all honesty, I'm still not really sure how I want to paint this kid's eyes. 
a lot of times I go into these and I have no idea what I want to do. Um, for characters that are from an origin, it's a lot easier because you have a reference, you know, you just want to paint it like that character. But these ones, like, you don't have to paint it like what the sculptor wants. And so, um, typically what I do is I draw out a bunch of eyes on my phone on, like, a pre-existing base. So, um, I'll just go ahead and show them. <laughs> Hopefully it will focus. So the colors are going to be kind of whack here because also my phone, you know, has certain colors. And let me turn up the brightness so this is you know our base it's definitely not that bright in real life but we we're just gonna show you for the sake of it um, and this is what we started out with Let's see if it will. there we go and so I drew a couple of uh, ones I wanted here is what I started with so I just kind of again <laughs> you know painted the yellow on in this image and then I drew a couple of ones so I drew this one let's see yeah, so I drew this one, which I'm like okay on. I don't think I like it too much. Then I drew this one, which is pretty much the same one, but it's added like, you know, a little bit more definition and things. Um, then I drew this one, which I'm liking this one so far. Um, we would have to go in and thicken the eye thickness a little bit because right now it's not really much at all in it. Um, but this one's pretty cute. And then this one, which is cute, but I don't think it really suits this kit. It's more, this is more like demon girl, you know, like little demon girl kit. Um, and so that's pretty much all I got <laughs> in terms of like me drawing eyes so far. Um, I'll probably continue to, you know, draw eyes and see what I'm feeling. But for now, we're just going to start with this yellow and see where that takes us. Um, would be cool if I could also incorporate gold in it. I was thinking of adding like a little eyelash or like an eyeliner um, with gold kind of along the top, but we'll see how that goes. So we're just going to go ahead and continue working now. Um, all I'm going to be doing today is pretty much uh, sharpening, you know, and taking off the yellow paint that I got on here. And so we'll fit inside this guideline. Um, really what I found is that uh, once you get your, you know, the whites of your eyes and your eyelashes on, the rest of the painting eyes is really just kind of paint by numbers. You just want to like stay inside the, the outline that you made. And that's pretty much it. After that, you can, you know, shape the eye however you want or do things. And so um, all I'm going to be doing now is just uh, wiping down this yellow paint so it fits inside these eyes. And I'm going to do that for both of them. And then... That will be all of the eyes tonight because we're going to have to seal this yellow paint. So we'll see how long this takes. And then uh, we also have those shoes to work on, which I haven't done at all. So if we, if I do uh, finish up this yellow eyes, then I can just move on to the shoes. So we definitely have enough to do today. And as always, if you have any questions at all um, or just want to chat, feel free to drop a message and I will read it and we can talk. But yeah, I'm just gonna be very slowly working on, excuse me, wiping down this yellow paint. Uh, we generally don't wanna wipe off too much at a time because we want this whole layer to just be, you know, super flat. So you can see here that I just painted down one layer. Um, it's very smooth right now for the most part. And uh, if we wipe away too much, then it's gonna start to be uneven if we need to add more uh, paint on top of that. So I try to go pretty slow when working on this area. And really all I'm going to be doing is wiping away at the corners and defining this kind of circular shape that the eye has. Thankfully this eye is also already sculpted, which makes that a lot easier. But the same rules apply even if you're working on a flat um, surface. You know, if your kit didn't have sculpted eyes and you're just working on a flat one, by this point you'd have your eye outlined so you can just kind of fill that in. And again, this is how I paint eyes. I do it very gradually, kind of layer by layer. Um, you can definitely combine steps or if you want it to look more kind of um, illustration based. You can use different medium and blend paint together right on the eye. There's so many things you can do with eye painting. So 
Don't ever feel like you're locked into like one style. Okay. Yeah, I did end up making an eye um, outline around the other eye as well. But I remember we were talking about me not sure if I wanted to do that or not. Um, but I did end up making a brown outline around those indented eyes. So that will be good. We can at least get that um, wiped down and see what I want to do after that. We are getting pretty close to the end though. Once we wrap up eyes, um, that's generally the last step that I do before I'm completely done with the kit. So we'll have some minor fun things to do with her base. But then after that, it'll just be a matter of uh, flattening everything and then starting to assemble it. So only a couple streams left, I would think before we completely finish this kit, so crazy. Build time though, when I think about how many streams we've done, it's pretty accurate uh, considering the difficulties that we had in this figure. We had a lot of issues during preparation that kind of extended that build time out. Okay. Hey Rebel Star, how are you doing tonight? Did you have a bank holiday today? We had a holiday over here. And it has been very relaxing, so that is nice. Okay. I'm gonna avoid working on the left there. I think I took off a tiny bit more than I wanted, but yeah. Luckily that I think I can fill that in bit in without any issue. But I do need to define this shape a little bit more. holiday yep super hot oh man well good you were able to paint, min paint minis but bad for the weather um i heard a lot of places kind of kind of a heat wave that rolled through uh this weekend so that's kind of unfortunate for a lot of places it was just too hot to even do like barbecues and stuff um over here it's very you know once summer hits everybody does barbecuing and things but where i'm at it was actually too cold to do that um, it's been pretty cold all weekend, so we were not able to barbecue. Still good to get the day off, though, you know. Okay, I'm gonna thin a tiny bit more of this yellow and see if I can place it along the area that I wiped too much of. Check. Yeah, okay, good. It's also a tiny bit up near the top here that I wiped down.
I'm generally not quite as concerned with things that approach the uh, corner of the eyelid just because a lot of times I do go in with additional layers and those layers will cover up um, you know other problems in the paint job meaning like I'll have a darker color up here near the tops of the eyes so I'm not quite as concerned um, if you know I miss a tiny bit of paint near the eyelash but still let's see here's the after the rain I've been wishing the heat was still on the house uh, <laughs> yeah man it's been really problematic um, here as well like we have had to switch from heat to cooling like over and over again uh, weather has been just kind of wacky and so um, I get cold very easily and so I put away like all of the you know cool weather type stuff my like you know giant onesie and all of that uh, just about a couple days ago <laughs> because it was like 90 you know back on Wednesday last Wednesday or whatever and then now it's cold again and I just we had to bring out all the cold weather blankets again and do everything again, switch the AC back to heating again, you know. So it's just, pick a, you know, pick a season already. <laughs> Don't mind it becoming summer, um, but let it stick to that at least. And I was just thinking about this kit. I really wanted to finish her in the middle of spring, um, but I think it's almost, you know, it's going to be June. It's nearly summer, and so... Um, this kit will just be the last bit of spring, I think, before we transition. <laughs> yeah, I'm, ex I'm extremely sensitive too. Um, I grew up in the desert, and so I'm basically anything below... I'm gonna speak in Fahrenheit here, so I'm sorry, international people. <laughs> um, maybe like 70 Fahrenheit, anything below that, and I'm just so cold all the time. Um, and my body has pretty poor circulation as well, so... My feet are pretty much always cold. Uh, one thing that I have found that's really helpful actually is buying um, a hot pad. So I have this like little stuffed bear hot pad thing that I put on my feet. Uh, and so I thought it was, you know, not really something I'd ever considered using before, but it's been so helpful <laughs> in helping me fall asleep. Um, just because, you know, your feet get so cold and it's kind of distracting. But yeah, I'd, I'd much rather prefer hot weather. Um, I love like cold weather clothing, but the feeling of like heat is much better on my skin. So the trade-off is always brutal. Okay, I'm gonna get in a little close on this just because I really wanna figure out what's happening in this corner. I might just need to go in a, a little bit more with my brown paint. Um, the eyelash paint basically and fill that out because what I really want above all is a nice kind of uniform shape circular shape for the eyelash or for the eye in general um, but I'm not getting that with the current outline that I painted so I need to go in and adjust that a little bit let's see I was born in LA and only lived there till four or five. Oh yeah <laughs> yeah very similar kind of climate um so yeah, where I grew up as well. LA gets pretty toasty, so yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, cold is just rough, you know. There's so many things I like about cold weather, but at the same time, um, I just definitely prefer heat. Put me under a little hot lamp. Okay. We're doing pretty good on this eye. Um, Thanks to all, all the cleanup I kind of did earlier. Mostly I just wanted to make sure we had enough time to do this today because the uh, last stream the eyelashes took a little bit longer than I thought and I did have to do a, a bit of minor cleanup off stream on them. But not a lot actually so we did a pretty good job in getting them ready. Let me take a look. Once I start reaching the base coat here, I'm gonna really start using my magnifying glass to get in there and make sure that the lines are how I want them. Okay. And this is like, um, I think I touched on this earlier, but this is also where you really want to start trying to make sure you don't get any fuzzies or dust into your enamel paint job because all of that 
is going to affect kind of the texture of the eye and um, how the paint will you know come off when you thin it down so you want your job paint job as smooth as possible on here thank you yeah I hope you had a good bank holiday as well honestly any time off from working is a good time right so. okay. let me see let me grab a little bit of this brown and see if I can just repair right here but it'll have to be pretty exact so Just need a really, really tiny bit. Just a little more, I think. And once I'm finished with this eye, I will show you guys up close. There we go. Yeah, I just had to get it to fill in. This tiny area where I wiped off the yellow too much. Let me see if I can. Oh, tiny bit there. Okay. I have a really small bit to wipe off. There we go. And. Do I want to continue thinning this? Kind of the good thing about painting your base coat on top as well is that you can cover up as much of the outline as you want. So I painted this outline not too thick, but definitely thicker than what I have visible showing here right now. So I'm not sure if I want to go in and erase more of this or not. Might keep this as it is right now and then work on the other eye and come back to it. Let's see, cicadas also super loud. Yeah, they've been pretty loud, um, monkey. Enough that like you open the you know window or whatever and you can definitely hear them. I personally have only seen like a couple of them, uh, mostly because we're not in like a super forested area right now. But my in-laws place had like hundreds of them, hundreds. And so like I actually did see one like on a leaf and it's like this big and it's got these big red eyes and I was like, ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so I'm just kind of staying inside. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys kind of what the eye is getting to be. Um, and so this left eye is where we're at right now for this, uh, you know, base coat. Here we go. And so this right one you can see is nowhere near that. Um, and we're gonna kind of work on that and try to get it to fit inside of this outline. This song keeps coming up despite the fact that there's like hundreds of songs on this playlist. Ridiculous. Okay. All right, so we're gonna jump over to the other eye and then if I need to wipe off a little bit more in that outline, I will. And I actually will erase a little bit up on here. I had noticed it's not super curved. I think there might be a tiny hair there. But yeah, tiny hairs will impede how smooth that paint wipes off because essentially you're like hitting a ridge. It's annoying. Okay, I'm just messing things up now, honestly, so let me Ugh, go back in here. I have like pea brain when it comes to this stuff, so I totally forgot that I just put on this brown paint. There we go. Okay. 
I'll remove this so we're able to focus a little more. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna be kind of rotating this eye around so I have a clearly visible uh, field of view for it. So if you guys can't see any of the details, just point it out. I know I'm kind of painting at a hidden angle here too, but it's because I'm left-handed. So some of this cannot be helped. And again, you really don't want to leave too much thinner on your brush because it will take off. The, the more thinner you deposit, the more it's going to dissolve the area around it. So I generally try to keep very little on there and just brush where I want to take the paint off. That way it's not dissolving anything that I don't want removed. I just really don't know how I want to paint these eyes. It's like, okay, this is interesting. I'm removing a bunch here. I put this guideline on really thin. Really don't need to take very much off at all. I'm just gonna add some more paint on there and let that kind of settle. We'll work on the other side instead. Okay, let me double check. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so this side, really, really not a lot of outline so I need to keep that in mind when I'm wiping away and you'll know um, when you're working in layers if you wipe away too much you'll see the layer underneath so if you're a lot of times if you're working you know on a white eye from the beginning you'll see that white as you start to wipe away your base color and that's a sign that you've gone too far um, in my case I'm seeing the flesh tone that we put on for this eye because there is no white in her eye and so that just means I went too far. Also does not help though that this eye is kind of uh, an odd shape. Even this eye is slightly indented, so I think I need to be working more at an angle here to remove some of this paint. And you do want to make sure that your colors or your base coat of your eye matches up with each uh, like with each eye. So you want to make sure that you try to get these eyes as symmetrical as possible. You don't want the yellow of your eye extending like all the way up past the eyelash here and then the other one doesn't because that just makes the eye look weird and it'll look uneven then. So we're going to try to get these to look as much the same as possible. precision kind of q-tips cotton swabs when painting eyes but I have stopped using that for a lot of my eye painting more recently just because I was finding it took off too much paint now I'm a little bit more patient and just do try to do as much as I can with the brush for whatever reason, I just felt like I couldn't remove very much paint with 
a brush and so I would go in all crazy with the cotton swab but then I started seeing just Japanese modelers are just more patient <laughs> so now I uh, try to be patient too it's a lot better working at a kind of an angle and tilting the head to the side like this um, it means that I can get in at the right angle and wipe off this yellow I was thinking that olive eyes might also be really cute and fit this. Um, I didn't want to delve too dark, like deep into the green spectrum, um, but olive is dull enough and also in the realm of like yellow that it might be cute. So a lot of the eyes that I kind of, colors that I worked with were either olive, um, you know, color scheme or orange. Um, I tried red a little bit, but I wasn't quite as big on that, so. Depending how this color turns out, we might just end up with olive eyes. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna kind of tilt, put this face, uh, so the, sorry if you really can't see anything at this point, I'm just putting the face, uh, let's see if I can angle it, like this, kind of, on the, uh, mat here, but I have to tilt it sideways, because I'm trying to get down right in this kind of nook and cranny, right where her cheek starts to come out. But I have to angle it in a way where I'm only wiping off the really bottom of this yellow. For this kit angle is really important. If I wiped it kind of at this angle, then I would wipe off more than I wanted, so. There we go. Yeah, I'll have to test, like, if I want to thicken this outline or not. Change things up. I actually really like thick, you know, eye outlines on kits, but a lot of anime kits try to go kind of as thin as possible, so my style has tried to adapt towards that, but it's pretty tough when you're hand painting and stuff to get those really defined thick or thin lines. Okay, let me take a look. So far, so good. Eye probably better than the other one, to be honest. Also, I think this eye is just like a little bit bigger in general. You'll very much start to notice that if you, uh, once you start painting, especially for a kit with sculpted eyes like this, I just seems bigger, but could be the yellow that we haven't wiped off a lot either. gonna start working kind of back towards that area that I started on and then had to paint over. Here's where we're at now. So we're getting there. It's kind of weird and faded. There we 
go. So we haven't done this portion yet, but we're getting there. Probably I'm just blocking the light with my hand. And also the gamma's messing with things. Yeah, I think olive would look really cute. I actually bought some olive paint the other day, like the actual color olive. So I didn't have to mix it. Um, but I'm not sure yet, so we'll see. I might just end up mixing the color anyway. Okay. Now that I know that this line is so thin, I'm going to tilt this head. I'm only painting kind of towards the cheek area and removing that. Also, the eye style is kind of different here. You know, we got this flat surface and then we've got a the indented eyes that have that kind of circle in the middle so i'd like to do something a little different with this eye plate and not do those circle eyes in the middle but we'll see let's see <laughs> yeah thank you thank you raider that's the goal is to try to get things looking neat and clean and you know anime style i guess Over the years, I just kind of developed this style to try to get things as clean as possible. And it's it's getting kind of hard to untrain from that mindset, you know, because sometimes you want to kind of go in with like a dirty weathered look or do something. And uh, I have a lot of like internal pressure to not do that now, just because the style I work with, you know, is typically these, you know, simple and clean kits. So... I'm hoping I get the opportunity. I, I have a couple of kits that could definitely do some cool weathered stuff and there's less uh, need to be completely accurate. But for this one, I mean, she's a maid, right? So <laughs> she's got to be nice and clean. Okay. Once I finish this kind of area right here, I'm going to take a look how we're going. Okay. That part's looking good. I'm sort of fuzzy that worked its way into the side, though. And I need to wipe off a little bit more up here. Totally happy with the yellow on the top of this near the eyelash, so let me see if I can wipe off any more of that. Because, like I said, it's making this eye over here look taller than the other one, which is probably not the case. It's probably just my paint job. angles like kind of making this super shiny too and I turn it come on zoom out there we go a little better Yeah, that's a little better, yep.
Okay, it's looking pretty good. Still this tiny corner bothers me. I can't tell if... Yeah, it's the eyelash that I need to add. Kind of the same thing is happening that happened on the other corner where I should have put a thicker outline to round that eye out, but I did not. And let's see, maybe add some little hearts or something like this. Oh, cute! Did you just draw this? Super cute! That's a very good idea. I'll have to consider that. Um, I think on, um, what was I saying? My, like, cover photo or whatever Twitch has here, there's a, a chibi that I drew that did have a little heart in its eye. And I was so tempted to, you know, do another <laughs> one of those for this kit. But I'm not sure if I will or not. I don't think so this time. But that's cute, like small accent hearts. So I'll definitely take that into consideration. Okay, this seems pretty good and we're gonna be kind of changing it anyway when we add more layers. So I'm not too fussed, but let me return uh, kind of back over here and see if I can remove just a tiny bit more yellow from this side. I think I layered the yellow on thicker on this eye than the other one. I know, yeah, my pea brain. I cannot forget I added some uh, brown on this already. Eye is a little more open though. Hmm, what can I do here? Question is, do I want her to have sleepy eye or more open eye? And also, let me test here. So here's where we're at right now. And that yellow kind of looks kind of olive-y already on this screen for whatever reason. But anyway, the eye is pretty much all cleaned up at this point, but I'm deciding kind of what I want to do up near the eyelash. Because um, it doesn't look fully the same. Oh, well, it kind of does on camera. But in person, like this left eye over here looks a little bit sleepier than this one. Excuse me. So what I could do, there's two options here. You can add more yellow to this eye to try to, you know, open it up a little bit more. Or you can wipe off more paint on this one to make this eye look sleepier. So it's just kind of a matter of, you know, covering it and seeing what style you like more. I think I'm gonna try adding a little bit more yellow on this eye and then wipe it away and we'll see how it looks. Just cause it also looks like when I laid that base coat down, I kind of missed the uh, portion at the top a little bit. So we'll see, could go horribly wrong. What I'm going to do is paint this on and then uh, we will kind of switch to the other eye and start working on that face plate or sorry the other face plate and then come back to this later once it's had kind of a chance to settle and dry. And there will be a slight unevenness around this top part but We'll see how it goes. Okay, that should be okay. Maybe. <laughs> to be determined. Okay, let me take a look at your other example here. 
Oh yeah, see that one's super cute too. I think it's a little bit too shiny um, for like what I'm intending for this kit to go at. Um, there's a lot of eye shine in that one. So if you guys uh, click the photo or click the link, um, you'll notice that there are two kind of, or three technically, three kind of oblong, sparkly, completely white sparkle shapes. Um, and those are, you know, what we call eye shine. There is also a, a kind of neonish fluorescent green heart that is also kind of considered eye shine. And then even along the bottom, there's all those little tiny oblong sparkly details. Um, and those would be not, I wouldn't say that those are the, the main eye shine of the kit, but they are more used as accents to bring out details in the eye, namely that brighter green, uh, that's kind of that lighter green oblong shaped along the bottom. Um, there's also that highlight that is along the blackish kind of part of her eye there, uh, which is a really great way to bring out, um, you know, that black detail. A lot of times when you put in that black detail, and I'm talking about that kind of horseshoe shape, um, if you just leave that as is, it's fine. But adding another color next to that, uh, that's the same as those other sparkles, that will give your kit a lot more emphasis in the eye color. So. Um, basically, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to bring out that lots of eye shine in the kit. And it's all dependent on how many layers you want to add, how much detail you want to add. I have kits, you know, or figures and all sorts of charms and stuff that have that. Um, I also have charms. Let me just bring out another example that are as uh, simple as this. <laughs> so this is just safer acrylic charm. Um, but you can see it's really pretty simple. It's got the base color, it's got the black, um, and the black is the same color as her eyelashes, right, and everything. Also, I see your comments, Sargasa, give me one second. Um, you know, we have the eye shine, which is that white part here, but we do also have uh, this little, you know, darker flesh colored line that runs right along her eye. And so, you know, rather than a black light here, this is another accent color that kind of brings out these eyes, that orangish color. So, you know, you can be super shiny, you can be really, uh, you know, kind of simple here. That's, that's the beauty of being able to paint eyes. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> the saber I bought in Japan. Um, I don't really collect saber stuff, but this one is just so funny and cute. Um, and I felt that, you know, it suited her really well, so I thought, eh, why not? <laughs> she can go on my wall of acrylic, <laughs> of uh, acrylic keychains. She's waifu material, so. Um, let's see. Can you explain what a fine line liquid masking pen tool is and how it worked? Uh, do you have a link to this by any chance? Just so I can see exactly what you're talking about. Otherwise, I can Google it really quick. I might just Google it real quick. Let's see. Amazon. Oh, wow. Um, in all honesty, I'm seeing a tool that I am not super familiar with. Um, if it, it kind of looks like a pen and it has a little dial on the side. This looks more like it's used for drawing rather than like actually um, masking off stuff. But it, oh, I see, it does come with drawing gum, which you can use. Interesting. I would say that this is probably used more in a um traditional art setting than garage kits it looks like it's basically a pen that deposits masking fluid so liquid masking and then you can kind of place it where you want to exactly on uh, the part of the illustration that you're trying not to work on let's see I'm just reading it real quick, guys. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So it looks like it uses liquid masking, which is kind of what we were working on before um, when I pulled out the Gaia Notes liquid masking. 
although it's a kind of a pen that you would put liquid mask into and then you can place or you know use the pen and put that liquid mask wherever you want let me see if i'm yeah i'm looking at the same one kind of brand that you are so this is a tool that you would use with liquid masking to get more accurate lines um, it looks like it's used a lot more in traditional art setting where people need to deposit a liquid mask on top of an area maybe that they don't want to color um, if they're using watercolor or something like that uh, personally i have not used this type of tool um, i'm pretty uh like <laughs> i guess clumsy i don't know if clumsy is the right word but I do not use a tool to deposit my liquid mask. I typically just use a toothpick um, and then kind of put it where I need it. And so, um, yeah, I would say that more so in garage kits for my purposes, I use a combination of super thin masking tape and then uh, put cover that area with liquid masking with a toothpick. Although you could use that tool um, if there was, you know, an area that you really needed to deposit fine. Uh, amount of liquid mask onto but I've never seen anybody in this hobby at least they haven't revealed the secret <laughs> that they use that type of tool hopefully that helps you and in the meantime guys I have switched over to this other face plate um, here is what it looks like right now it's pretty messy I haven't worked on this one at all so yeah, that one, it does remind me of a fountain pen Sargassa. So um, I would imagine depending on how thickly you place that pen down, you, uh, you know, would be able to deposit more of the liquid mask. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but yeah, her eyes right now are kind of a mess. You can see the eyelashes still have that yellow on the top. And so all of that needs to be removed. Um, I also did put a pretty thick layer down. So at this point, it's kind of covering the inside of her eye kind of where those little I, I don't even know what i call this the detail like this the oblong detail sticking out so that's going to be interesting i'm i gotta try to remove some of that we'll see how that goes before because i think i want to put another color as the ring around her eye but we'll see and this, uh, for reference, is the first time I've worked with an eye like this, with this indented eye shape. So everything that I'm doing here is uh, just kind of me improvising and <laughs> trying to figure it out. So do not be surprised if I suddenly go, oops, or something like that. The first time for everything. I think what I'm going to do here is start kind of at the top and then that will guide my shape. So I'm going to remove all this yellow that's sitting on her eyelashes right now. I have, th I think, more of an idea of what I want to do with this face plate than the other one because the other one's essentially a, a blank canvas, but this one you're already given that center shape and that kind of iris which is typical of a lot of anime kits anyway so Let's see, is there a reason the sculpt has indented eyes? Looks to me like it makes painting them harder. I have no idea <laughs> if there is particularly a reason. Um, this is just kind of how the sculptor did it. And when I bought this kit uh, in Japan, I, I had an idea. I pretty much knew her eyes would come like this already because I had seen this official photo, um, the one under the current projects. Yeah, it's definitely just a style thing. 
Um, what I didn't know is that she came with this flat face plate. So that was a total surprise. Um, I completely expected just to receive this one with the indented eyes um, and her hair bow as well. So a lot, lot earlier in the stream, you know, I was surprised that she had a, a hair bow because in that picture, the current projects picture, she just has the maid kind of headdress thing. So this kit was full of surprises, full of holes, full of alternative parts, um, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. So twice the work to paint all these eyes, but it's all going to be worth it. And then we had to switch to magnets because she does have these parts. So it's all been a great experience to show you guys, you know, different techniques of this hobby. But yeah, this is definitely my first time dealing with this type of eye. Um, I have dealt with kits, well, only once, but I did have a kit that had um, eyes, eye sockets, basically. They were just, you know, holes in the eye, and then you would kind of place your eyes in the back there, almost like a doll eyes. You know, a lot of times you get doll face plates, and they're just, they don't have anything. They just have eye sockets. Um, but, you know, um, that's not super typical with garage kits. Sometimes you get it with like Volks kits, like the quarter skill, Ray and Asuka have those. Um, there's, I mean, they're not, they don't happen very often, <laughs> but I haven't seen this very often either. So let's see. Hey, I'm glad you're able to tune into my streams. I do appreciate that. Yeah, hopefully you guys are getting something out of them. <laughs> A lot of uh, point work to get to this point, but it's all been worth it, especially, you know, once we get all the photos and stuff at the end. So that'll be fun. And yes, I did actually see that haul Y, although it, they must have sold out immediately. And they must have had another super limited run because I saw that tweet and, or at least the tweet, you know, that they opened the order up again. And I checked it, you know, after an hour and everything was sold out already. So was, I think the sculptor just like put out a tweet, had it open, people bought it super quick, and then that was it. Like they sold out within an hour. Um, and I have no idea in terms of the stock that was available or anything like that. So a little bit disappointing because um, I had been wanting that uh, made with the braids in her hair. So there's another version, not of this type of kit. Um, but it's slightly larger and it's a maid who has her hair in braids and that's actually the original one that I really wanted um, since I started following the sculptor but now that I've worked on this kit <laughs> I'm not so sure I want that kit anymore um, that kind of can happen too if you work with a uh, find out you know you get your grail sculpt or whatever and you find out that it's not great quality uh, you, I, at least I get dissuaded from purchasing again, so I'm not sure I would jump right away and get another kit from the sculptor, although I do really like their style. So I hope, you know, if they improve their casting or something like that, I would buy another kit in a heartbeat. But this one is a pretty simple and it was still like a ton of work, and so uh, doing it all over again for a kit in a very similar, you know, style, the maid is the other maid kit is pretty similar to this one so i'm not sure i would paint it right away definitely need a break from the maids I'm gonna switch to something totally different i think for our next build stream keep it a little bit uh more exciting there's one kit i was looking at and i think it will be a good fit but i'm, I'm still kind of deciding between a couple of them let's see I got this eyelash pretty much done. There's a little bit more cleanup I can do on this line to make it smoother, but it's enough that I'm going to use it to guide the rest of this eyelash now. You can see that it's interesting. It casts its own shadows, so really there's not too much we need to do even, because um, to some extent there will always be a shadow cast. Yes, I did see that one, Hollow Lie, and I, again, I'm not like into that one, so just a shame, yeah. Some uh, this sculptor in particular seems to have really, really small runs of kits. Um, I was saying before when we got this kit from Wonder Festival, uh, my intention was not to buy this one. It was to get that, you know, gray made with the bra the braids. But um, if I'm recalling correctly, the sculptor made some insanely small amount, like three, maybe five of that kit, and they sold out within ten minutes. 
um, less than that, I would say, because we got in the door at Wonder Festival less than 10 minutes in, you know, we were at that booth and it just was already sold out. So bummer. It happens even with original kits sometimes, you know, you can't get the ones that you want. Just depends how many that artist decides to bring. But thankfully things are changing, you know, now that we have booths and we have these online venues. So, you know, maybe in the future, this artist will offer more. Uh, have I ever used a liquid chrome pen on your models? Uh, I have seen them, yes, but I have not used them on my kits. Um, I have also seen people who have been decanting Gundam markers, particularly the chrome one. That was a kind of a hot topic for a minute on Twitter where Japanese people, some guy decanted his uh, Gundam, chrome Gundam marker and decided to spray it through his airbrush and it left like an insanely bright chrome, like absolutely beautiful chrome. Um, but then I saw another tweet and apparently it took like eight days to dry. <laughs> Someone did a test like touching it, seeing how long it took to dry. So, um, you know, Gundam markers, chrome pens, other things like that. There's really cool stuff you can do with them with kits. Yeah. If you're willing to, you know, use a marker on your kits, nothing wrong with that. A lot of times the paint they deposit is, you know, similar based or it's got a lot of pigment in it so really fun to work with also people have used um, pens like that to kind of i don't want to say draw graffiti but you know make graffiti illustrations on um you know clothing and stuff so that's super cool to see as well illustrators using it um, for that also so i learned about this the other day which is really cool um, and not at all related to garage kits, but still kind of in the um, realm of miniatures and models. So uh, hobby trains, you know, are kind of an old thing that are dying away, um, except for a specific group of like older people that like them these days. And also they're really expensive. Um, but some new artists are using, like buying these model trains and stuff and are using the sides of them to practice graffiti on and are then like exchanging them with other people. So you know how, well, maybe you don't, depending on where you're at. Um, if you have trains that run through your area, a lot of times they have graffiti on them. Um, actual graffiti artists are buying miniature trains and using them and putting like graffiti on them and then, you know, displaying them and selling them. And I think that's so cool. <laughs> that I was so excited because like what a cool idea to do that in the modeling like you know miniature sphere but at the same time you're bringing something totally unique yeah I think that's super cool um and it really just kind of stuck with me because I was like man I you know if I was a graffiti artist and I also like miniatures that's something I could do in like a in no time at all like I would definitely do it um so just really cool like things you know so many things you can do on a canvas, on a 3D canvas. It doesn't have to strictly be, you know, like, you know, I'm painting on a miniature train and it has to look exactly like this model, you know. No, there's like fresh and cool stuff you can do. Okay. This is definitely just a cover song, but whatever. <laughs> Sadly, I'm not a graffiti artist. I have no experience with graffiti. Um, maybe someday if I wanted to get into it, I would definitely practice on miniature trains. That would be really cool, I think. And I like those uh, side cargos. Okay, I'm gonna focus on this. So far, so good, I think. My concern is the middle area because I did lay this coat on quite thickly and it kind of settled right around the ring. So wiping off that outer ring is going to be tough. Let me take a look at this up close. 
Mm, yeah, there's a little bit more yellow I need to put on the side here. We'll wipe that down shortly. There's also a little bit up here I missed. So yeah, we're just doing a tiny bit of touch-ups with this yellow. I don't want to be painting over the whole thing. Again, that's going to introduce unevenness. So try not to do that much. Um, and let's see. Background coming. Oh, here's a kit you did a full custom paint on. Let me take a look. Whoa, I'm liking the red on that one. Really smooth paint job too. That's super cool. You see, I'm zooming in. Nice use of color with the uh, bright yellow details as well. I'm not familiar with this model, but that's super nice. Oh, okay, Darling in the Franks. I also have not seen that anime, so <laughs> cannot say you know <laughs> anything other than that, but I really like that red. Uh, what quality, like what paint did you use on that red? Like the brand, I guess. And did you airbrush it? It can be pretty tricky to get red sometimes, but yours looks really great. Okay, wiping this off real quick. Oh, Mr. Hobby. Yep, we are well and familiar with Mr. Hobby here. They have a actually quite a nice range of uh, reds and Gundam like reds specifically. I've been slowly leaning more into Mr. Color stuff, um, mostly by necessity because supply chains have been so bogged down due to COVID, and uh, a lot of places distribute Mr. Color products here. It's like the accepted lacquer brand, I would say. A lot harder to find other stuff unless you're shopping online. So sometimes I just like wander into the paint store and I pick up like, you know, a bottle of Mr. Color. Even if I have no intention to use it anytime soon because it came in like a cool color or whatever. That's how paint the uh... cranberry pearl red. By any chance, is it the 40th anniversary <laughs> cranberry pearl red or am I thinking of something different? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I bought that one too. I actually used it on my uh, Christmas kitty so it'll cycle through and pass builds. Um, it's a really nice red. It, that's one of the ones I was just telling about. Like I impulse bought it because I was like this is a really nice red. <laughs> that's so funny. And it is. Like uh, the pearl effect you get is really nice. I like how deep toned it is. Um, a lot of times you know you get these reds or these candy reds and they're not um, like the color just seems off and this one is like a really beautiful darker red yeah if you guys ever get the chance I might as well just bring it up let me grab it from my shelf real quick that's so funny it was, again this one was an impulse buy and um, I have zero regret oh if you hear that it's my cat toy I just uh, <laughs> accidentally stepped on it let's see let me show you guys the red first and then um, I will click this link. So yeah, this is the one we're talking about. Uh, this is Mr. Hobby. Um, it's a Mr. Color Special Paint, so their 40th anniversary. Uh, it's Cranberry Pearl Red. And so um, here's what it looks like, you know, in the bottle. So really pretty. It, it deposits a really nice kind of darker red pearl, which I liked a lot. Yeah, I can't wait, monkey. We'll see. I'm gonna assume that things are, you know, not going to be crazy available for a little while still, just because EMS is already so bogged down. But um, it's good. I hope, fingers crossed, that things open up real quick. And let me click this link. Oh, this one's looking cool too. Whoa. I like that uh, teal color. 
for the um, kind of spear and also the boots. I like that darker color as well, like the darker blue. That one's really nice. I'm a fan of that color scheme, so that, that one I actually like a lot more. <laughs> like dark blues. I like dark blues and I like that stuff, but I don't typically paint them. I'm always painting red and other warmer colors, so it's funny. I got some weird, okay. That must be the song. I'm like, what is that talking? I'm gonna skip that and see. Hopefully I'm not just like being crazy here. And let's see, got your first dose of vaccine. Oh man, uh, hopefully you don't have any side effects other than the arm soreness. It really seems to be hit and miss depending on, you know, what variety you get. Thankfully, I only had a bit of muscle soreness um, the day after and then nothing after that. But so a lot of my friends, um, if they got like the fights or the Moderna one, they were just out for a couple days. And so that's pretty big bummer, but a lot more big bummer if you get COVID and spread it. So not complain. Okay, we are still working on this face plate. Um, I think I'm going to switch back to the other one in just a little bit, just so we can wrap it up, like, officially. And that way I'll have a minute or two to think about how I want to approach this little ring inside of her eye here. There's a tiny bit of yellow that I wiped off, but I don't think I'm gonna bother repa replacing that. Just because I'm anticipating using another color on this that will fill in that spot. Let me wipe this down real quick too. The thing about this being it indented is that you can see every detail too so we really want to get this inside looking nice and smooth and do not want this fuzzy there we go So yeah, here's kind of where we're at right now with the eye on the left. You can see it's casting a very interesting shadow. There we go. Um, the yellow is kind of spooky. We're still working on things here. Not actually sure where this will go, <laughs> but we'll see. Oh, nice. So you're working on a conversion kit for a gunpla. Oh, interesting. I've heard of those before. I'm not a formal like gunpla artist or anything, but I have a lot of friends that work in gunpla um, and do kind of conversion-y stuff sometimes. So I am familiar with what you're talking about. And let's see, um, hopefully Japan starts distributing more vaccines. Yeah, it is very difficult to get to Japan right now still. Um, their vaccine rollout has been kind of abysmal. Uh, and a lot of bogged down by, you know, legislation and paperwork because Japan loves their paperwork. So I actually read an interesting article about how their kind of political sphere is shifting because people were so dissatisfied with how the COVID um, rollout is happening. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not expecting to go to Japan anytime this year for sure. Um, and for me personally, probably not for a long time <laughs> once I start school. <laughs> But it would be nice for friends to be able to go, you know, and I have uh, some friends that have been having to postpone their honeymoon for, you know, two years now because then COVID started. So unfortunate. Well, let's see. Here's a picture. Let's take a look. Whoa, that is badass. Beautiful colors. 
really, really cool, loving the heel, loving the focus on like roses and I'm not huge on purples admittedly, but this one just really works because you've got a lot of the nice reddish purple mixed in with that cooler tone. And the eye, like does it come with the LED stuff for the eye as well? That's a really badass one. Taking a drink, I have some coconut water tonight, so don't mind me. All right, we're gonna wrap up this eye on the uh, left here. The only other thing left to do is kind of try to make it more rounded because I was dissatisfied with the yellow shape. Um, now that I think about it, we could just, you know, add another color <laughs> to make it rounded, but uh, clearly I just want to add myself more work, so. You can make it. Yeah, I imagine you could probably add those LEDs pretty easily. That would be something super cool. A lot of the um, Gundams that I see that do have LEDs, like, you can't go wrong. It always looks cool. Especially if you get, like, a Zaku eye. Yeah, and it's nice and shiny from the LED. Super cool. I have not experimented too much with LEDs, um, if I'm being honest, mostly because I haven't really had the opportunity to do it besides, um, you know, bases here and there. But it is something that I would like to include on more kits in the future if given the opportunity. Basically, like, I just like adding stuff to kits, <laughs> whether it's like miniature things or uh, jewels or LED lights, like I'm big on adding supplemental things. So almost always my kits come with some sort of weird accessory stuff that I find at a thrift store or whatever. Even this one will come with some stuff on the base, so never simple. I'm gonna focus slightly at this point because I don't want to wipe all the stuff that I just added on. Okay, starting to like the look of that better. Just gotta smooth out this tiny bit right here. Yeah, maybe I will. You never know. Could use any type of paints. There's plenty of super toxic paints that aren't allowed out of Japan that I would love to get my hands on. Gotta be risky, you know. That helped a little bit not enough where it's just like oh my god such a difference but rounding that eye out and giving it a little bit more paint on top did seem to help the shape enough that i look at it and i'm like oh that's not totally abysmal let me try cutting down this one a little bit too Basically what I'm talking about is I want the yellows of the eyes to both kind of be in the same general location. Right now one of them looks a little bit higher than the other one. So what I did before was 
add some paint, but now I'm going to take away from the other side. Oh, don't want that to get in there. Picked up a fuzz. Same time, we don't want to wipe down to our uh, base skin layer. Yep, hashtag hazmat paint life. That's what we do here. Always working with them flammables. Okay, that actually worked really well. I think I've, I've shaved down that one enough that I'm happy with it. And now I need to round out this a little more. That should be pretty good. Okay, so I lied. <laughs> you notice one thing and then I'm like, oh, I hate it. There's a little bit of an angle right here that I want to smooth out. Just tiny. I'm going to end up wiping away all that paint that I put on. I knew it. Okay, let's take a look up close. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. There is a slight fuzzy that worked its way into here, but it's small enough and I'm going to cover it anyway. I don't care. So uh, th at this point, this uh, faceplate is pretty much done in terms of the base coat. So we've got this nice smooth yellow. Um, here's a real up close of it. You can see from the sides, it fills in from the top you know looks pretty good up close so what we're gonna do is leave this as is and then give it another um, top coat of gloss and that will smooth out any um, other excuse me slight deformities that we see noticeably in in this eye right here sorry in this eye right here you can see there's kind of a slight paint bump and it's pretty uh insignificant in the grand scheme of things but a gloss top coat will smooth that out as well so i'm not going to worry about it so we're good um let me clip this actually because we're pretty much done with this eye or the face plate for now looking at it far away pretty cute too so and with the um hair on it's starting to look like something her eyes are really yellow though, so this is definitely going to be not the main color of the eye. Um, a lot of times I do start out with these really lighter bright colors and then end up covering up the majority of it. So uh, that will probably, there'll be like a little circle of yellow in the bottom by the time that we're done with this. So, all right, let me get a drink real quick and then we're going to go back to this plate. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, trim the kind of paint off of this eye and get it nice and smooth and then work kind of in the middle with the remaining time that we have. So we'll let those shoes sit for a long time at this point too. We got to do cleanup on those. So that will happen. Um, mostly because I do need to still put on that pearl top coat as well. We've been slacking on that. So similar to this other eye, I kind of dumped a lot of paint into it to make sure that it filled up all of that area. Um, I also turned the face over <laughs> while I was drying, so that way any wet paint would kind of sink towards the front of the face rather than down into the hole. But it didn't help very much. <laughs> it's still like pretty thick, so. Also, that coconut water is really good. I <laughs> get another drink of it. Pretty good. All right. The thing about eye painting is that the initial like bit of it, like this, the eyelashes, 
Um, that I, f I find is the most time investment. The closer you get to finishing these, the more layers you add, um, the shorter everything gets. Cause you know, the amount of work that you'll need to do and the space you're gonna be painting on gets smaller and smaller the more you, you know, work on. So next time, uh, whatever method we decide to do, you know, there will be areas of this yellow that I don't need to paint. So that part of the canvas is gonna get smaller. And by the very end of it, you know, all you're going to add is your eye shine and kind of the sparkly accent stuff. And so that does not take very much up in terms of the eye area. Just a matter of making sure that you get everything the right shape that you want. So super round or an oblong shape, whatever. Um, that tends to take the most time. I do have some tools that help give you like a round shape so maybe next time i will show them off work on the eyelash. There's kind of a ridge on this eyelash for whatever reason, so um, that's interesting. The other side did not have that ridge. Kind of a lot of yellow in this corner here, so and take a little bit of time to wipe that away. There we go. The thinner is settling on this ridge. So you can see the yellow. Might need to soak some of this up. Sponge, honestly. There we go. And wipe the top off too. 
the one thing that's very important, especially when you're starting to work with darker colors, um, is that you're careful, careful that you're wiping off um, all of the eyelashes and everything in your surrounding area, um, kind of your skin tone, because as you're using this enamel wiping method, uh, you will be leaving streaks of paint. It's just kind of what happens. Um, but you do want to make sure that you remove pretty much everything. So it can be a little harder to tell uh, when you're working with lighter colors like this yellow because, you know, if yellow comes off and it's onto this fleshy skin, it's you're not going to see too much of it. Um, but if we were working with like a bright green or blue or something, it would leave a kind of a bluish tint onto your skin tone. And when you, if you add another top coat on top of that, it's pretty much locked in. So you just want to keep an eye out when you're working with your face um, that you remove all of the extra enamel in case, you know, you don't want smudges or anything like that. You want this face as clean as possible. And working with fewer layers will help with that as well. If you're able to, you know, blend on the eye as you're working with it. Let's see how we're doing here. This eye as well is like slightly longer. Maybe it's just the eye style of this kit. Is that my cat? Hmm. I hear some yowing. And remove a little bit more of the yellow around here. Not quite as straight as I want it to be. Okay, we're getting pretty good here. Um, I do need to cut off a little bit of the yellow that's sitting near the eyelash still at the top. Kind of having the same problem as the other eye faceplate that we had, where one eye is looking just kind of longer than the other one. Sculptor might have done this intentionally to offset the bangs as well, now that I think about it though. Um, because the placement of the eye on the bottom is fine like it's equal but the face is kind of at an angle you'll notice that when it's kind of sitting here she's looking off to the side and so the eyelashes do match up but because of that uh, one eye is kind of like slightly longer once I uh, put the bangs on I can kind of test that though I'm getting very close to being happy with this though, and then we can work on the middle. Oh, might have been a fuzzy. Let's take a look. Yeah, maybe. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah, it could be why. I'm not 100% sure, but the offset is looking pretty good. And so yeah, whoa, this is like pretty spooky. Now that you can see it, like her eyes are so shiny. And then comparing that to the rest of the kit, you know, that's going to be, they're very bright. So we're going to have to do some work with that. Maybe I will go olive and cut it down. Oh, let's see. What's your, <laughs> what's your fave brand of spoons to test airbrush? Favorite spoon brand? <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever gotten that question. Oh my goodness. Um, well, let me show you right now. Um, I don't have like a must do brand. I just kind of buy whatever whenever I go to a store. So I suppose my favorite brand right now would be guaranteed value uh, because you can get 100 for nearly like two or three bucks. So um, I do like these ones because they have a nice curved surface. <laughs> talking about a spoon like every spoon doesn't have a curved surface <laughs> but um, generally like if I'm buying spoons I'm not looking for something specific um, but I do like more surface area so sometimes I bought spoons that have like a they're really tiny for whatever reason um, and those ones are kind of lame right like you want a really nice curved spoon uh, but this one I like it has a beautiful form right look how smooth it is look how it gently tapers into this long form like this is peak spoon you guys anyway if i find another spoon brand i'll be sure to let you know but right now you know more is better <laughs> yeah yeah we're big on spoons here raider um spoons are kind of a must-have in this garage kit hobby just because you're able to test so many paint colors um i actually did put away like not put away but uh taped, I guess, the spoons that we used. So you can see this nice compilation of colors is what our kit is basically going to look like in a nutshell. So I do like doing this because then you're like, ooh, look at these beautiful colors all lined up together. It's pretty nice. <laughs> um, and let's see, do I ever have issues picking up paper towel debris using paper towel that you're paying from? Yes, all the time. Um, and so kind of when I'm, whoops, I hit that. Kind of when I'm uh, about to deposit the enamel thinner onto my kit, I make sure that there's no like fuzzies on it. Um, so occasionally you may notice me like kind of grab it and then look at it and then kind of go like this. That's probably because I found a paper towel fuzzy. Um, your paper, similar to your spoon brand, I guess, your paper towel brand will also matter. Um, because if you're buying really low quality ones, they're probably going to pick up more fibers, right? And so um a lot of times i like a higher quality paper towel just because i do work on them a lot and i don't want to be pulling off fibers like similar to how you would want to buy a nice quality brush right you don't um want to buy poor quality brushes because then you're gonna you know be finding and picking out brush hairs from your paint drop um that kind of you know i actually had that problem a lot when i first started out building kits because you know, I didn't have the money to invest in really nice quality brushes and my paints job suffered because of that. I was working with, you know, acrylic paints, hand brushing the whole kit um, and you would just get like tiny hairs that came off sometimes and it's super annoying. So high quality brushes, high quality, you know, paper towels, um, shop rags. I've tried using microfiber towels uh, on my kits like as, you know, a base before. Not really a fan of them. I kind of prefer a paper towel. So I, I suppose they would work if they don't pull off fibers, um, just kind of, you can use whatever. Um, and also I really like how they end up rainbowy at the end. I <laughs> just like seeing the amount of color that gets put on a paper towel. So that's more me. Um, and yeah, oh my gosh, I think we were talking about before that it would be just nice to have a spoon wall, like a whole wall of colored spoons. Yeah, that's you know very much garage kit artist type things but i would not mind having that i have my own collection of spoons let's see um are there certain brands or sizes of brushes you'd recommend especially for painting eyes um for garage kits uh generally you can work with any brush um as but i recommend the smaller the better uh, right now let me get my other brush that i use so you can kind of see the difference in sizes 
I have a whole jar of them, so let me bring those over as well. So the one I've been painting with pretty much this whole time, um, it's kind of my go-to right now. And this is a Tamiya brand one, which I bought um, in Japan. It's a very specialty brush. You can see it's really tiny, um, tiny, tiny point. But for kits like this, which are so small anyway, I find it super helpful. Um, but this doesn't even really have a formal size listed on here. So you know how a lot of them have like round 3O or double O brush, like this doesn't have anything like that. Um, Tamiya does make a bunch of other ones, so let me pull them out. Although I'm a little embarrassed because they're in pretty shitty shape, so. <laughs> um, and let's see, give me, let's see, one second. To read this. Okay, let me finish my, my rant and then I'll answer you guys. Um, so these are some other brushes from Tamiya. Um, Tamiya brushes have this kind of long, thin rod here and then they're kind of different. Um, but you can see the quality of these is getting kind of bad, mostly because I abuse them. Um, you don't want your brush to be kind of fraying at the end. That's a sign of it being uh, either well used or not taken care of well. And so um, a lot of times when you're working with paint, you don't want to like be soaking your brush in here and get the uh, thinner, whatever thinner medium you're using up into the rod here because it's going to affect the fibers and cause it to fray. So. Um, I try not to do that for this one. You can see it's in pretty good shape so far. That's kind of why I've been thinning, uh, whoa, camera. That's why I've been working in this little jar. So I've been using thinner and just putting it on there. Um, I do have a couple of other brushes that I use for all purpose. Um, this is a nice version that I haven't even used yet. So this is a round 3-0 brush from Princeton. Um, it's meant for oil painting, so you know it works with enamel paints because those are oil based. Um, you can see it's not nearly as crazy a point, but it's still pretty rounded. And so I use this a lot. Um, I actually used this brush way before I used this one. And then you can see here. The one on the top is the one that I use pretty actively and the bottom is my like new one. So it gets kind of rounded and well used over time. So you wanna be careful and um, make sure to clean your brushes regularly. Don't let them sit in solution. Um, Tamiya makes brush cleaner actually that works really well but I haven't had a chance to use it. And let's see. Um, in terms of painting eyes specifically, I would recommend a 3-0 brush for wiping away a lot of um, the extra enamel. I use that a lot. I have a really long, fine one that I haven't had the chance to use, a one-liner brush. So that one's really nice um, for wiping stuff away. Also, these types of longer brushes will soak up a lot of color, so you can get really like long, thin lines without needing to recharge your paint, I guess. Um, and let's see. These brushes, I, I'm not actually sure what Tamiya fibers are. I assume they're probably synthetic, um, and I'm not sure about these ones either. Um, yeah, I can't say. I'll, almost all of the brushes that I use, I would say, are probably synthetic, just because I find them at art stores or something like that and just use them. Also, I found this one sitting in the bottom. Man, my brushes are in not so great shape. Embarrassing, now that I have to show them off. <laughs> also, um, kind of in the realm of things and related, um, nail art brushes will work really well in this hobby. So a lot of tools from nail hobby supply stores and nail art in general cross over. I might as well tell you what I was talking about before. Um, I have a pack of like nail art stuff and so a lot of these brushes are really tiny meant for you know working on nails which are oftentimes my nasty nail sorry <laughs> smaller than a kit right and so you can get a ton of tiny details in with one nail um, and so what I was getting at before if you're trying to add like eye sparkles or something um, is that nail art supplies have these tools that will deposit you know, some amount of paint in like a little dot or an oblong shape. And so I use these two sometimes um, to get kind of eye shine. Mostly this one, this is a kind of a rounded, you know, metal tool. And so you put your nail paint on it and then you just put a dot and it will leave a circular dot on your kit. And so that way you don't have quite as much um, cleanup to do around that eye area. 
you don't have to waste as much time trying to get it perfectly round when you can just use a tool that will do that for you. So I found that's really helpful to use these types of metal tools. Um, my mom bought a bunch in a pack for me, so like I haven't gone on my own and tried to locate them, so I can't tell you like what tools are better. Um, but I have used these more than I thought I would, so I do recommend those. Um, and let's see, your great grandfather by using Vaseline on your brushes. Interesting, like brushing the fibers after you finished uh, painting with them or something like that. I assume that would probably keep the form intact, um, which is, you know, a lot of the problem is, especially if you get liquid up into it, then it loses its form over time. That's a good idea. And I do have Vaseline, um, cause that's one of those things that you just kind of add onto your arsenal in kit building. Um, when you're trying to putty gaps and stuff, usually you'll put baby oil, not baby oil, like Vaseline or, um, you know, some sort of gelish stuff like that on one side and then the putty will dry on the other side. So that's another random thing. A lot of random stuff can be used in this hobby. <laughs> but yeah, um, what was I doing now? Oh yeah, we're gonna work on the inside. That's my kind of brushes that I use, at least currently. Um, it changes all the time, to be honest. Like once I use one too much, I just switch out and I use another brush. And then sometimes I'm gifted brushes because I'm, I'm pretty easy to buy for. People just assume I want painting supplies or kits and I usually do. So, um, you know, I accumulate stuff. And so I just kind of use stuff and then switch it over when I'm done. I'm kind of a creature of habit. I don't really use a ton of variety. I try to kind of use the same thing until I get tired of it and then I try to find something new. And let's see, use turf, okay, awesome. Yeah, that's a really great tip. I'll have to try doing that sometime. Um, Cause yeah, a lot of times, you know, we work with so many different mediums in this kit hobby. And it's definitely always a good idea to preserve your brushes for longevity. So many tips that, you know, older generations can tell us too. I do miss uh, having that kind of interaction via forums and stuff because I used to talk with a lot more older people on forum boards and all sorts of old modeler dudes and, you know, painters have all sorts of tricks. So you really got to be very specific with your Google searches if you're looking to learn something new. Um, and then sometimes you'll dig up like ancient forum board posts from 2006 once you'll limit Reddit and everything from your searches. That's always fun to like read the old dude's convos and learn some new stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna try to wipe off a tiny bit of this yellow that's inside of the eye, kind of around the ring of her eye right now, inside that inner part. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I've never done this before. And honestly, I wish that the sculptor just you know, <laughs> didn't put this here. It would be a lot easier to add your own like little jewel or something um, and do it that way rather than have to work around something existing. Also, I am intending, I think, to color this ring around her eye slightly different. So that should be interesting. And the thing about this is where a, sh a smaller brush will come in really handy because as we're brushing this away, we do not want to hit the side of her eye here. Let me move this so it doesn't have trouble focusing. So yeah, we don't. We want to be wiping the inner ring of the eye. We don't want to be wiping the side of the yellow because that's just the base. And very, very little thinner needed here. Really don't want to take off basically anything around the bottom of the eye, except for that ring. I'm gonna really focus here. I don't think we have to get too exact, um, but I do wanna make sure that the surface area is like cleaned off. And so that way when we add another color, we're not encountering any weird bumping. And we should be able to see this difference pretty much immediately because this eye is so um, indented.
I think back to the topic of brushes, as long as you make sure that your brush has a really fine point and you're working, you know, on a sm with a smaller brush, um, ideally like a zero, zero or smaller than zero, three, zero, whatever, you'll be fine. Um, Cause the thicker your brush is, the harder it's gonna be to get these sharp lines that are so often needed in garage kits. Particularly when it comes to stuff like eyebrows, um, a huge beginner mistake is to use too thick of a brush and then you have a, a really hard time wiping it all away. And let's see, uh, time for bed. Yeah, I hope you have a great day, great night, um, great sleep. I know it's pretty late over there. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you next time. Next stream will be Wednesday. <laughs> I guess your Thursday, technically. We're still good to go so far, guys. I know it is uh, almost 10. I'm gonna go a little bit longer and just kind of see how this eye um, is developing. And then if not, I can rethink it and we'll figure things out on a later date. So far, so good. I think just working really slow is helping. Making sure we get the right angle. Remove this paint. This brush point is just small enough where I can get most of it onto this ridge and it's not going to hit the yellow. Like I can feel my brush hitting the edge of the eye, <laughs> but it's not going to wipe off anything. Yeah, that's working really well. So I think we can wrap this up tonight. I just need to be slow and make sure I get the whole edge even. Very small details that you guys probably won't be able to tell on camera until I put it up super close, so bear with me. We're about two thirds through this tiny little oval, so I'm making my way back to the inner corner of the eye. Get a little tricky with the eyelash there, so I'm gonna have to angle it smartly. tough angle. There we go. Very interesting how many shadows are cast naturally by having these eyes indented. 
looking pretty cool, honestly. You can get a really interesting and as spooky as we want effect by filling in that inner dot. I left it flesh tone for now because I'm not sure what color I want it. Okay, let me take a look up close. Let's see. Probably shave off just a little bit more on the inside here. And then I will show you guys. Okay, so I'm starting to see the sculpt popping out. Uh, sculpt itself wasn't like super even in the first place, so I pretty much wiped off all that I can on this eye um, without starting to dig into the base. And let's see if I can show it off. I don't know if it's really that noticeable. Kinda, you can kinda see it. So you can see the outline here um, of where the flesh tone kind of starts to show up again having a little yeah there you go you can guys can kind of see it hi mr freaky i haven't seen you all night tonight how are you nice seeing yellow emoji pop up we are just working on eyes getting pretty good let's see my favorite thing clean brushes is automotive specialty reducer interesting oh wow yeah i'm a huge fan of uh you know using automotive stuff in this hobby because a lot of times you get it in bulk and it's cheaper than you know specialty hobby brand stuff contains all the same chemicals you know a lot of these paints are either oil based or petroleum based in some form so there's a lot of overlap um, in terms of what happens so um, just a matter of you know figuring out what's compatible and what will dissolve what because yeah like you said if it uh you know interacts with something cheap or you are not sure what it's going to melt down uh, you could have some adverse consequences so got to be careful always run tests thank you mr freaky yeah we're getting there we uh wrapped up this one earlier so we're i decided on a bright yellow for whatever reason i think i'm gonna go with that we'll We'll see how this develops. <laughs> like I said, a lot of times with these original characters, just trial by fire. Um, but yeah, we're kind of wrapping up the inside here on her eye. So I finished one of the inner dots. And let me wipe that down a tiny bit more. But we're gonna work on the other one now before wrapping up for tonight. Really what we're trying to do is just get that nice base yellow color down and then any darker colors or other you know accents will be added on top of that there's also i did forget to mention um, a fair number of things we have to do outside of this eye as well so um, as you may or may not have noticed she has no eyebrows right now um, she also has no mouth painting so she's got this mouth indent but no paint right now um, she has no eyelid so we really just have eyelashes and base color so Usually I add all of those together. So at some point, either on stream or not, um, I'm gonna add, you know, all of the things I just mentioned. And that too will really help define this face because right now she's got the basics, but there are many, many things we can do to make this face look better and more anime-like and just more defined. And they definitely make a difference, all of the things I mentioned. Also might add a highlight, honestly, on the, the top of her eye. So 
Um, I did mention using gold maybe as some eyeliner. I might actually um, work on the top top of the eye too. So you can see this uh, eyelash sculpt. I'm talking about adding a color right on the top of the eyelash sculpt. And so that will, um, excuse me, also bring out some definition. But these are just ideas that I'm floating around in my head right now. Whether or not I actually do them, I'm not sure. A lot of times you just have to try it on your kit and then if you don't like it, wipe it away. That's what enamels are great for. So there's a lot of room for just trying stuff out. Okay, so I'm gonna focus slightly and just wipe down this circle or oval, I guess. This one, the paint went in a little bit thicker, so gotta be real careful here. Okay, it's gonna be a little annoying. Paint is pretty thick uh, in this eye, so it's gonna take a little while to wipe down. I know I just said that, but I'm reiterating it. I also did not do any uh, sort of sanding or anything on this part of the eye. So what you see here and the shape that it is, is just what came with the sculpt. Way too small to get in there with sandpaper and there's not really anything I want to change anyway about it. So. There we go. Slowly. Also glossed the hell out of these eyes for the base layer um, once the eyelashes went on. So there will be no flaking off of these brown eyelashes. Because I also wasn't sure what angle I needed to put my airbrush at to get these, uh, get the gloss into this eye other than spraying head on, I guess. So far so good. We're again about two thirds now. Probably can wipe down this side a little more though.
especially thick on the bottom here for whatever reason. So. Need to soak up that enamel. Okay, and I'm going to take a cotton swab and kind of rub out inside the middle of her eye here. Because as we're thinning it, uh, some thinner gets placed into the eye socket in the very center of this iris. So we want to make sure we remove all of that extra paint too. We'll be painting over it anyway, so not too bad if we leave some of it, but it will leave the eye looking cleaner and offer a better um, template, I guess, for me to continue painting. Okay, now I'm going to continue kind of defining this shape. Gotten most of the paint out. There are a few spots that I really want to remove a bit more. I think the eye sculpt's just impeding that at this point. Let me look at this up close too. Okay. Left eye, pretty good. Needs a little bit more here. Really just trying to emphasize smoothness, like I've been mentioning. We are hand painting, so there's only so much you can do, but I can try to remove these some of this paint and make it as smooth as possible. Pretty good. Let me take a look. Again. I just kind of turn it around and view it at all angles. But I'm pretty pleased with this. We took off pretty much all of the little area that left the yellow intact, so that's good. Let me look at the top of the eyelash as well. That's I'm pretty pleased with that. This is really smooth, all things considered. There's just like one tiny, tiny area near the left of her eye that doesn't have any enamel, um, but that's fine because we're gonna cover it up anyway. So I think I'm pretty much good with this eye. Uh, let me attach to a clip and then I can show you guys. Where did I put my alligator clip? Hmm, maybe, maybe we'll do that later. Okay, so here's the eye. Um, let me see if I can angle the light, maybe. That kind of helps. Let me see if I can move my... Uh... Oh, there you go. Can you guys see that better? I had to move my uh, light, but I think that helps a lot, actually. So maybe I'll just do that in the future. Um, you can see our lines are very clean at this point. We've fixed up this eye. Um, we've left it so there's a ring inside of her eye that I wiped down with enamel. Um, so what you can do is add a really like hot green or an accent color either in the middle of that eye or as the ring of the eye, kind of undetermined at this point. Um, but you can see that the shape, let's see, matches up inside of that outline to our best, you know, intense. <laughs> 
looking at it from down below gives it a really spooky kind of look. Um, and up at the top, you can see that the eyelashes, the uh, line there is pretty smooth as well. So with the hair, let's see how it looks with hair. Here she is with hair. So again, spooky lighting because I have it like focused right down on it, but it's coming together and she's got those really bright eyes right now. So that's great. Um, and the other one, I'll show the other one while we're working on it. So this is the other face plate, which we also finished tonight. So um, again, really smooth lines, uh, trying to fit in all of that yellow inside of the outline. Here's what it looks like with the hair. So that one, pretty looking good. <laughs> Just kind of looking at it in the camera right now. Let me see what it looks like with the long hair too. Let's see. I like the hair on the Twiki Pid. I think you tweeted already. Oh, are you talking about you met me, Mr. Freaky? So that little, uh, blue hair. Thanks guys for the uh, compliment about the faces, by the way. Yeah, I'm really excited to show off more of you met me once I finish her. Um, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I just tweeted out an update today on the commission that I've been working on for a long uh, while now, pretty much as long as when we have been working on this one. So I've been working on that commission in private for a client. Um, and I'm just about done with that one, so I'm posting an update. But yeah, she's got some really nice kind of bright blue hair. Those pictures came out so saturated, but she's, you know, got a much softer color uh, in person. <laughs> but it's nice. Yeah, I really like the gradient on that one. It's coming together. Um, ew, look at this, all this shadow. But here's her hair. So you can see it's starting to really uh, be something here. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Yeah, so we're, we're getting to a point where she's starting to come together it's a little bit too bright now, honestly, but um, yeah, pretty happy so far. This yellow is a little bit too uh, intense for my sake, honestly, so I'm hoping to kind of dull this down with some other colors, but it'll be interesting. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I have for tonight then, because we actually did get to a point where I can just base coat this with the gloss or top coat it. Um, and then we'll continue working on stuff on Wednesday. I will really have to start deciding what I want to do with this eye to make it like, <laughs> presentable. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge later. Um, other miscellaneous thing we will need to do sooner rather than later is wrap up these shoes. So remember long, long ago I added enamel paint to try to clean up the shoes. Um, that I still haven't cleaned that up, so we need to wipe that down or and get it to a point where it can do that. Maybe I'll try working on that a little bit tomorrow. Um, that's pretty much all that was left on that part. So yeah, I think um, that's gonna be it for today's stream. Next time we will continue the eyes. Um, we will by Wednesday, yeah, we'll need to start working on the secondary color because right now we've got this base color and then tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to top coat it with the gloss. And so that way, by Wednesday stream, we can uh, start working on the secondary color and by then the top coat will be cured. So we won't have any risk of wiping off that paint. Yeah, more eyes coming soon. We'll lock down the color and maybe work around with some random stuff so I can figure out what the heck I need to do. Um, but yeah, looking good so far. You can see she's really starting to be uh, spooky and showing off. So next stream will be on Wednesday. We're in June by then. Oh my goodness. June 2nd. So Wednesday, June 2nd uh, will be the next stream. And I hope to catch you guys there. I hope you all have a great rest of your night and I hope to see you soon. So stay cool. It's getting hot. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.